Hello everyone. I am in Istanbul's Atatürk airport right now. I'm about to leave Istanbul and head back to Taipei. I've been in Europe area for about a week and a half. In case you didn't guess the first city that I landed in after watching my last video, it was of course, I'm in Budapest, Hungary of course. So I was in Budapest, Hungary, which was awesome. I was there for about eight days and I had a wonderful time. And I made about four videos to kind of show and display and express kind of my view of the city. I thought it was beautiful. So the video series I think is gonna be called Beautiful Budapest. Four separate little videos, each with its own arc, trying to tell the story of just how beautiful the place is. This first video is gonna talk about the people and their openness and how wonderful they are. And the other, the other three videos, one will cover the architecture of the city, kind of like the environment, just the physical nature of the environment that's there. Another one will be about my friend Julia, who is a painter and she actually literally creates beauty. And then I think the last one will be my friend Jackson and I, us actually running through the city, um, which will be a great way to, to show um, how all of this kind of beauty that we've talked about figuratively manifests Literally. Okay, so today's video, we went to uh, what's called a ruin bar. The ruin bars are unique to Budapest. Um, if I were to, sh if you were to look like top down on, on a lot of the apartment buildings, they're actually like in a grid with a big chunk missing. So it's like um, like a big square of apartment blocks, and then in the middle there's like a courtyard where there's nothing. And over the years, some of these places, some of the courtyards have kind of become dilapidated. So in like the 80s and 90s, some genius people decided to convert or renovate these little areas into bars or clubs or restaurants or stuff like that, just to kind of make use of this dead space. And now it's kind of taken off. And I'm pretty sure it's, it's unique to Budapest. So I went with my friend Jackson, who is an American who was living in the hostel I was at. He and I kind of went running every day. And then Anna, who actually worked at the hostel. Anna, Anna, where are we going? Why are you asking Anna? Wait, where, guys, where are we going? <laughs> I don't know. We're going to a market? We're going to the farmer's market. The three of us, we walked to this one call, I can't remember the name of it, but I'll put it right here. That's kind of, uh, that's one of the most well-known or famous ones in the city. So at nighttime, it's a bar slash club, uh, but during the day, it's actually a farmer's market. And it's one of those like super organic, like local farmer's markets that if you live in California, you you live for this stuff where like the farmers come in from the countryside and they you know upload their offload their trucks and it's just full of just like straight from like the cow's udder and all that crazy stuff so yeah so we walked over there and we tooled around for like an hour inside was so striking um like the colors and just the things and the decorations it was as if someone had went to like one of every like antique or used clothing store used item store in the freaking country and taken one of everything and just like threw it all in this one bar to create this environment and it was very it worked um, it was very like unique and artistic and had a really cool warm feel very, very nice vibe there were like delicious cakes there sausages and cheeses but what, what stood out to me was this awesome interaction I had with the cheese lady that was there. So one thing I noticed about the Hungarians is that they are extremely open and extremely direct. So they maintain eye contact. Sometimes there's like physical touch. And because of that kind of intimacy, the conversation usually goes deep very quickly, which is really cool and super awesome to find. Strong intellectual conversation. So I met this cheese lady and she realized I was a foreigner and then we got to talking. True to form, the conversation got deep really quick. So she was like, where do you live? How long have you lived there? What's it like? Blah, 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 blah. You know, I was like, hey, you know, I live in Asia. And I, I just started talking to her and I told her, you know, like I've been there for about two and a half years. I like it, I enjoy it. But sometimes as a Westerner, it can be hard to integrate. It can feel kind of difficult to really, can be difficult to really feel like you're part of the culture. Even though I speak the language, even though I have friends that are natives and stuff like that. Like an example I always tell somebody, cause I see it, is there's people who might've lived there for 20 years. They speak the language fluently. 
Um, they might have like a Chinese wife or a Taiwanese wife and kids, you know, they're very much, you know, they, they live there. But, you know, when they go on the street and they talk to like somebody at the shop, um, they're going to get talked to like they're a foreigner. That first interaction is going to be, let's use English, does she understand what I'm saying? And it's always going to be like that. It could be just because of skin color or because of, and it's honestly like it's, that's probably just the way it's going to be just because of like the differences in how we are physically. Whereas if I live in a European country for 20 years and I learn the language and I, I learn the, the ways and stuff, I will get approached on the street as if I am native to that country. And that's kind of what I tried to express to her. And her response and our, the way, direction our conversation went was just so fantastic. She spent about 15 to 20 minutes illustrating and giving examples of how I could integrate into their culture. Because I said, you know, I'm thinking of maybe moving to Europe, maybe Budapest, who knows. She's like, oh, there's, there's expat groups. Um, there's language groups you know that are free we meet every Friday um, there's job boards she was like oh yeah my friend he's American he's been here for 10 years he learned Hungarian even though it's really tough she's like giving me success stories success examples and I just thought that was awesome because well for one like she was a total stranger Two, she was literally at work she spent time doing this and then number three it's that I've never I don't think I've ever really had somebody especially not in Asia actively make an effort to try and like help me integrate into the culture if that makes sense and I don't think that happens a lot of places to be honest so that interaction was like extremely striking to me and I took a few pictures you know I took this one picture here um, I wanted to try and capture kind of her beauty and capture the moment a little bit you know she's smiling in this picture but during our interaction she wasn't smiling like that obviously she had this really awesome expression just strong deep eye contact that just totally like just locked me into the conversation there is a web page here, uh, this is for you. And if you stay more here, this is Rakuzi Square, it's like close to here and from here. Yeah, it's like I said, it was, it was so easy to get intimate and so easy to get deep really quickly. And what was really cool over my trip there that I, that I noticed, that I realized was that this wasn't unique to just one person. This happened many times to many other people. It happened whether I was at the bakery talking to the baker. Butter Brothers, I wonder what's in there. What would you recommend? Uh, it depends what you like. Very hungry. Sweet cottage cheese pillow. Walnuts, cinnamon rolls, poppy seed. Are you vlogging? You want to see something? Chocolate, poppy seed. Nice to meet or at the cheese shop talking to the cheese lady or whoever you know if you say hey how's it going you will find out how the other person is going So yeah, that was my that was my experience at the farmer's market. I just wanted to share and kind of give like a really good example of um, how awesome the people are there. Obviously, you know, I'm sure every Hungarian person is as amazing as that woman was, but fortunately I met, I met her and um, I met many others like her while I was there. So I thought I would share. And I was just thinking like a way that like you and I could do this. So I think that the next time I meet a foreigner in my native country, you know, so if I'm an American, I meet somebody, I really gonna try, I really wanna try and go an extra step to make sure they feel maybe a little more comfortable, um, a little more welcome, and maybe even kind of help them uh, adjust and adapt. I know now from experience from living abroad, it's very tough to kind of leave your home country and go to another place where things are radically different and try and make that new place your home. It's exciting, there's tons of new experiences and I love it, but I know how difficult it can be. So I encourage you guys to do the same. Um, the next time you meet somebody who might be visiting for a little while or they're on a study abroad, or they actually, they left their country and then now live there, See if there's anything you can do. You don't have to give them anything besides maybe a little bit of your time. Anything you can do to help them adjust, adapt, feel welcome, feel more like an American, or feel more like whatever country you're viewing from, feel more like they're part of your culture. I, I can't express how awesome and welcome and, and warm that feeling is, knowing that in a foreign place, you have something, you have somebody, you have something that's not so scary that isn't so far. That's a little more close to home. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, there's gonna be three more videos about Budapest and then there's gonna be, I think, four or more about uh, Istanbul where I am now. So my goal with my, my content and my channel 
is to to help and motivate and champion and inspire everyone's like inner adventure. There are examples or like literal video content of how to, of ways you can kind of break out of your comfort zone or push the edges of what you might be used to in order to discover something new and uh, unique and beautiful. So yeah, if you like the content, if you feel inspired, if you enjoyed it, please share it with your friends, share it with everybody. It's my goal to share my content with as many people as possible. Thank you for helping, I appreciate it.